Hello, shalom. Welcome to today's Heart to Heart show. My name is Lisa Kamikazi and I'm so excited to share with you our love stories of Jesus. Today we have a special guest that we had even last Sunday who's going to continue sharing with us her testimony, her love story with Jesus, her journey. And as you are used to, for some of you who have been watching this show, you know that we are here to share love stories of Jesus, trying to really understand if this Jesus we hear in songs that we see in movies and we hear all the people, most people talking about him with different perspectives. We are trying to understand, can he actually transform somebody's life? Can he actually encounter you in a real and tangible manner? So that's why we have a guest like we have today, Giselle Mutoni. How are you? Hello, how are you? It's yeah. nice to see you. Welcome in the show today. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm thrilled and honored to be here. It was a blessing to have you last Sunday. And I'm mm -hmm. so sure that uh, especially young people who've been following your testimony, mm -hmm. they've been uh, impacted and like kind of really excited to oh, wow. get on their own journey with Jesus. Oh, wow. I'm glad and glory to God. By Amen. Yeah. So I want you to take an opportunity again to talk to people who are following now, mm -hmm. uh, who have not followed the first episode. Mm -hmm. Tell them who you are, who is actually Giselle Mutoni. Oh, yeah. Me, uh, personally, uh, I'm a child of God, a born again Christian and a servant of God. And yeah, I'm really honored to serve God. So more specifically, uh, I serve uh, in the teens church or in the pre-teens church at New Life Bible Church. I'm really honored to be there. It's a blessing. Mm. And aside from that, I also serve God through social media. Like I have a channel which is called Deep Revelations where I just, you know, share the gospel in, with different, using different analogies and different tools. But yeah, it's mostly about Christ. Mm. And aside from that, um, yeah. I know you're but, also an engineer. Oh is yes, yes, yes. Mm. I'm an engineer. Like that's what I took in college, and I even worked in that area. And right now, I'm combining it with some business, family business, and mm. yeah. And what do you mean by an engineer? What kind of engineering actually? Oh, you, mechanical engineering. Okay. Yeah. And by most, that, what do you mean? What do you do as a oh, mechanic? Oh, most specifically, it's in designing machines. Oh, and, yeah, wow. Using softwares. That's yeah. really amazing for a young girl like you. I hope that people who are watching, especially young people, they are inspired okay. and kind of challenged to know that even, you know, like I know we've been promoting women in our nation mm -hmm. for the last uh, years. And I, for, to hear a young girl like you who's, you know, taking mm -hmm. on things like that as studies and also work in that area, I think it's very encouraging to other young people. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm so curious. that's really good. So now we are not here to talk about engineering. We are here yeah. to talk about Christ. Yeah. And last episode we ended where you were actually locked in your room and mm -hmm. you were reading the entire book of John. Oh, yes. So yes what did yes. you find out that you, you know, you decided actually to build your life on? What, what did you find mm -hmm. in that book of John that made sense and made you give your life to Christ? Honestly, that wasn't my first time reading the, bu the book of John, mm -hmm. but that was my first time reading the book of John with the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So there's a change in reading the Bible with, with, you know, without the Holy Spirit and with the Holy Spirit. So without the Holy Spirit, it's just a normal book that gives teachers, like, that teaches about morality, the way you should behave outside there. But when there, there was a different, like there was a difference because the Holy Spirit was now there in the room. Mm. It was revealing to me things that I once read, but now they just, they were highlighted in different way. I could see like, wait, what? So me believing in Christ mm. is what actually will give me access to eternal life. I'm like, I've read this before, but I've never seen the huge value of it upon my life. So it was just mostly about like, uh, God was like removing a veil over my, la over my eyes and I could see the truth in the Bible. Mm. And I was transformed by that truth. Of course, at first, it first brought me down to my knees and I was like, you know, it first humbles you where you get to the point where you're like, Lord, I repent of all my sins. For, for me, I, I couldn't feel, I couldn't connect to the fact that really Christ died for all my sins. The one that I did in the past, the, I mean, past, present, and future. I'm like, so Lord, if you die for my sins, so I can go and live anyhow, and then probably I'll still go to heaven. So I kept having an interaction with the Holy Spirit after everything I read. Mm. So, and God continually revealing to me, it's like, then that means that you really were like, you, you didn't really uh, uh, have the faith because the faith that you have in me will now prompt you to do good works, will just transform you. Because when I enter in your life, it's just you are a new person that no longer desire to go back 
in doing all those type of things. Mm. So I kept having that uh, conversation with God and it just didn't stop there in the room. And even when I went back to church there, I was going to New Life. You know, things made more sense. The, the songs made more sense. Everything oh, wow. made more sense. I was now a new person. It's like if a veil has been lifted. He has lifted, been yeah. I was transformed in a new person that desired different things than the way I was before. Is there a specific scripture, like verse? Because I, mm. I also love the book of John so much, but is there a particular verse that you read and you felt like this one actually is really kind of op doing a, an operation in me? Honestly, I can't tell you that there's a specific, because I read the whole book and mm. that's when I started to question God about the things I just read, the, you know, the whole entire summary of it. Mm. But I can say that John 3.16, was also an, another highlight but mm. i just even the whole entire thing just brought back to me god just revealed to me how it's not about what i do mm. it's about what he did on the cross Amen. so it, it just kept making sense to me and i was like really humbled and brought down to my knees i'm like really it's never about what i do it's just the death of christ mm. and to tell you a little bit i went back to the philippines because there i was still, i haven't graduated when I went back to the Philippines, I went back to my old life because I didn't know how, you know, there's these fleshly desires that, that prompt you and be like, you know, you can go back there. But I felt like this is not where I belong mm. because there was a new person that inside of me that desired new stuff. But the more I kept going back to that environment, doing my old lifestyle, I started to lose contact with the, with the Holy Spirit. Oh. I could feel the, the spiritual dryness inside of me. Mm. So I just remember now I had everything that I really desired in, in worldly perspective. Mm. So I was living my life in worldly perspective, but then I kept feeling so dry, empty inside of me. Then I told God, Lord, please come back to me. Mm. I don't care if you take away all these things, but please come back to me. I want that connection that I once Because you had once tested it, yes. you have once felt it, so yeah. you knew when it was not there. Yeah. Mm. So then when God came back to me, he was like, yes, I'm coming back. How did but he come the, back? I want to know. So you remember the, the, uh, when we go back to part one, remember I told you like there's this preacher who say that God is going to reveal himself through you through dreams and vision. Mm. So he started to reveal to himself to me through dreams and visions. And not just that, actually when I went back to the Philippines, I even registered myself <laughs> as a member of that church. I've been going to that church for three years, but that was the first time I registered mm. myself. And they, uh, they assigned pastors, different pastors to every member of the to new members so they also assigned a, a pastor to me and my roommates so we went and registered ourselves so this pastor she came and challenged us and you should join ministry mm. you know and yeah i was like really i don't feel like joining means then she's like what is it that you're interested in doing and i'm like i think i love to dance mm -hmm. i'm not really good but i really love to dance and then that's when she was like okay before i even told her everything I just find myself, she already grabbed my hand and she went to register me in the dancing ministry. So you joined dance as, as art of worship. Yeah. Tell us more about that. So they, they taught us like how to Bible study. They, mm. they, there were so many classes that we went through mm. and all of a sudden I, st I started to notice like I became like a sponge that uh, easily uh, feeds Absorbed. on, yeah, that mm. easily feeds on, real, on lyrics. Mm. So that's one of the things that made me stop going to clubbing. Because when I went there, I could f now easily grab the, the message in the lyrics in, the, in, the, in those clubbing music, you know. And I, I could feel like it doesn't fit with the person, with the new person that I was. Mm, and wow. yeah, so I could sense that I'm no longer, I no longer fit there. And also one thing, they even started to teach us, they'd be like, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, so you should use it to worship God not to worship any other message which contradicts the word of God. Mm. So they taught us about many things about music, about worship. And I, I stopped going there for that purpose. And there are many other things that God taught me to stop through dreams and visions. And he was like, you know, stop, get out of this, don't do that. He gave so, us examples apart from clubbing. What else did the Lord lead yeah, you to stop doing? So even like in the first part, I told you like I would cheat, I would break rules just to get what I want. But then mm -hmm. there God transformed me into being that person who's like waiting on God, mm -hmm. like, you know, being patient in the process, even though it doesn't, you know, give you quick results. But, you know, it's the right process. It is the right, even it even transformed the, the reputation that I had there in at, 
at school, they could easily trust me with anything, you know, mm. believe me for anything. Mm. Even me socializing with my classmates, with my professors, like, you know, I was just a new person. But then I just noticed that me, God changing me, he even changed my environment. Like, I could see my professors, they were like angels sent to me. Mm. Honestly, they, they knew my weaknesses, they knew my strength. So they always were there to fight against my weaknesses and they'd be like, hey Giselle, you should focus on this, you shouldn't. They were always on me, mm. challenging me to be, to be better. Mm. They, were, they knew that I easily forget stuff, but then sometimes I would walk by them and they would, everyone had an announcement to tell me, some that was already spoken in class, some that they are going to speak. So they knew my weaknesses and they, is the, they kept on challenging me as if they were just personally sent to me, you know. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't the only kid in class, so. And I just had a better connection with people out there. I mean, I just saw my life changing. I even started to be more active in church, in churchly activities, mm -hmm. having friends at church there in the Philippines. So there were many things, even the practical stuff, like there are things that, yeah, there are many things that God told me to stop at that time. I can't recall them right now, mm. but I just saw myself being a transformed person. And really ch changing all of those things, it wasn't really hard mm. because I felt like there was another power that empowered me to easily say no to them. So God gave you the grace. Yeah, to be the able grace. To... And there was that power of the Holy Spirit that made me feel like, you know what? These things no longer taste good to me. I feel like I now have another desire to, you know, to walk in this path of the Lord. So mm. looking back, that, that's really where that, that's how God transformed me into mm. being that, that new person. Wow, that's really beautiful. And yeah. because I remember even in the first episode, as you shared, you got to a point where you felt like there was no sense to life. You couldn't yeah. find a point of life. You got to a point where you even felt like suicidal. Mm. But to, to really see the journey you've worked with Christ to a point where you know what you are called for, mm -hmm. where you are living a life of purpose, is just something yeah. really beautiful. And I want to encourage some people watching, especially young people who are watching this episode, that the same God, the same Jesus that you found, yeah. who found you, I never know which words to use really because he, he finds us me. and we, fi you know, we find ourselves in his love. Yeah. So he's not um, someone who's just looking for a few people or elites, like he's... he's also looking forward to you, he's pursuing your heart. He's interested in a relationship with you. This, this yeah. is something that is beyond even what we can understand, that the Son of God would actually want a relationship exactly. with you. That's and he really says in his word that he's at the door knocking, and if you would let him in, he will come and have a meal with you. Yeah, so so I just want to encourage someone who's watching that it's possible, it's possible, it was possible for me, it was possible for Giselle. You can also enter this relationship with him. If you feel like mm. you don't know what tomorrow is, you know, holds, like I'm telling you, even for me, I don't have everything figured out and I suppose yeah, you don't. don't, but we trust him, we have found meaning in him, we have found purpose in him. And it's not just for those who are desperate, those who are suicidal, it's for everyone because the Bible says that all have sinned and we have all fallen so short, short of, of the, the glory, glory of God. God. So we all need a savior, we all need a yeah, savior so and true. thank God that the savior was given for us and there's nobody else, it's just Jesus. So I encourage you if you have not opened up your heart to him, that today would be your time where you actually choose to make him Lord in your life, to let him carry all your burdens, carry like he carried yours, he carried all yeah. the anxiety you had, the low self-esteem, like you felt mm. like you were not significant, you were suicidal, you think of all those evil mm. things. And he took over your life and yes. he's in charge now, he's Lord. Mm. And he did the same for me, he's done it for millions of people yes. uh, who are willing to actually open up their hearts to him. So if you are watching and you have not decided to do that, you are encouraged today and this is your day, don't miss out on that. And I want to ask you some, um, more questions about the faithfulness, the goodness of God, because mm. you have worked a life where you, Jesus was not Lord in your life. Yeah. You have worked a life where he was your friend, but not Lord, because you shared that with us. Yeah. That you had him as a friend. You could go to him when you were struggling with things and you would share tears and he would, you would know that he's there, but you had not let him be Lord, like rule your life, be the boss of your life. Yes. And now you have experienced having him as your boss. So can you share with us, what is the difference? Before we even go into the faithfulness, what is the difference from living a life where you know God? Because most people who are following us now, they believe in a God. They believe there is God. Yeah. You know? They believe sometimes when they are fa facing challenges, they pray to even a God they don't know sometimes. Mm. But what is the difference from being on that level where you are praying just because you are in trouble mm -hmm. and a relationship where you actually have Jesus 
as your friend, not only a friend, but Lord of your life. Can you share the difference you have experienced? So, yeah, let me uh, share probably like a few uh, mm. of the, my life events that mm. where I just saw mm. God's goodness over my life. Mm. And trust me, when I was in those situations, mm. I couldn't see it. Mm. But uh, every time I went a little bit away from it, I was like, wow, Lord, mm. you're such amazing. You know, uh, there's this verse that says that many are the plans of a, of a person in their hearts, mm. but the Lord's will always prevail. Amen. And I've seen myself making many plans for my life, mm. but every time the Holy Spirit will come and knock on my, on my heart, it's like, Jesus, I'll stop being stubborn. Mm. Go back and seek the will of God. And every time I went back seeking the will of God, now I'm so grateful that I went to that path. Although it wasn't, it wasn't always that path that everyone is clapping hands for you, mm. but it was that path that filled me and mm. made me content. Honestly, yeah, if I, tell you, uh, if I take you back to my story, so when I, after I received Christ, everything changed in, you know, in the Philippines. I felt like, wow, I'm not going back in Rwanda. Mm. I was enjoying everything, you know, because I could see God in everything. And I would just, I'm like spiritually, uh, academically mm. everywhere, you know. You were excelling. Everything I was, was excelling in everything. And I was mm. like, and it was the right pace, you know. Mm. I won't say that there were no trouble. There was still trouble, but there was this type of joy. This, So I was feeling like probably this is where I need to be in my life. So that was my plan. My plan was to stay there after college and, you know, you know, and probably go in another country for masters. But yeah, that was my plan. But then uh, an issue came uh, about my passport. I had to come back in Rwanda and renew it. And that was before the last semester. Mm. So I was like, and then I felt burdened, like as if I need to seek the will of God about where, where is my next move. Mm. So then I started to uh, seek the will of God three people confirmed this thing so i asked for my dad for advice i asked my pastor mm. and my and my professor they all gave me the same reasons like why i need to go back in rwanda but with the same reasons i'm like probably this is god who wants me to go back in rwanda so i took all my belongings in that vacation i just took them back in rwanda so that i may in the last uh, in the last trip uh, i won't have a lot of love a lot of luggages so i did that but when i came back in rwanda you know i came uh, i came back to the philippines but there was uh right after i came back to the uh to the philippines there was covid covid hit mm. and when it hit uh it hit it, my parents were really uh bothered by it and my roommate's parents we were they were really bothered i would say that that was god walking through them because for me I wasn't, we all thought it was just going to last for a week and then that's mm. it. I was like, they are really exaggerating. But then they were like, they were really uh, bothered by everything. So they, they were like, come back in Rwanda. So I went back. I'm like, really? These people, I, for, for the first time, they are really, they're not even calculating the cost. Mm. I'm like, something is wrong with, this th with these things. But when we came back in Rwanda, the gates of the Philippines closed and the gates of Rwanda closed. It was just like the right time. Mm. When we came back in Rwanda, you know, COVID, what happened? It took longer than what we expected. Yes. I'm like, Lord, you just delivered us. Mm. You know, the place where we lived at, there, back in the Philippines, we're living in a small room, but then we had like amenities, many amenities, like gyms and whatever, but we shared it with others. Mm. And everything that was shared with others was not allowed to be touched on in that uh, that period yes, of COVID. Of the, yeah. I'm like, so we would have been locked in that room for the whole entire COVID session. And it lasted longer in the Philippines than the way it lasted here in Rwanda. Mm. So I'm like, Lord, you just delivered us. I'm like, hey, hold on. So I, that was it. But then right after I came in Rwanda, I graduated online. Everything happened online. Wow. So I couldn't go back in the Philippines. Mm. But then you remember that I already took all my belongings. You had everything here. Yeah, I had everything here. So I was not bothered. Like the will of God came in my life and I was already prepared for that purpose. <laughs> you know, mm. so I was like, yeah, God had already prepared me. And right after, because I already had another plan. Okay, now my plan is to take internship, but then go back for my master's. Mm. I'm not going to stay long here in Rwanda. And yeah, I even started to apply for my master's. I had everything that was needed, all the requirements. But then when I gave it to some agents, they failed. 
and they didn't understand why they were failing. Mm. Some of them even started to avoid me because they didn't have a justification. And I'm like, let me take things in my hands and start to apply things for myself. But every time I got to, started to apply, there was some burden inside of me telling me, uh -uh, no. Mm. Even when I went through worship, there was that constant voice telling me, you've been making plans that are totally different from what I've planned mm. for you. So I couldn't even easily connect with God in worship. I was just feeling that voice telling me, you've been going astray. Mm. And then I'm like, oh Lord, so now what do you want? So I had that burden inside of me that desired to study the Bible in depth of it. So I kept telling that burden to people here and there. Long story cut short, they kept advising me like, you go, why not take theology there in art? So I registered myself for a theology. Mm. And for the first time, I felt that peace coming back wow. to me. <laughs> I'm like, so Lord, this is why you wanted me to stay here. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh Lord. So, mm. so I could see now God, you know, I will see the plans of the Lord. And telling you right now, that is one of the best decisions I've ever made, going through theology. And, you know, God had a funny way to make me stay focused. Because in that season, I started to have these uh, people coming in my life, false preachers, false uh, uh, false prophets telling me things that confused that me yeah, and good thing that it, ha it happened when God has already provided a way of escape to me mm. so sometimes I'll go there and I'm like you know I used to just go around you know hearing different people speaking and what and sometimes I would just be escorting someone to their church and all of a sudden a prophet comes and then be like they want I want to be your spiritual father da, 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 telling me <laughs> things I'm like Mm. You know, and that, at that time, I didn't know how to easily make a difference between what is, you know, I was right so confused. Mm. I was still at that stage where I could easily confuse bones and meat, you know, mm. and as confused as it is something to eat. So, mm. but then that way, theology became like a way of escape to me, but it also made me so focused. I used to ask professors a lot of questions mm. coming from my confusion state. I was so focused in, you know, and... Not just that, not just professors, even the classmates, because my classmates were pastors, mm. the contribution they made always like it just made me quickly absorb what was what God wanted me to have in that season. Are you still doing theology now or you? I'm you done. OK, I'm kind of done because I'm just remaining with ministry project, but I'm done with going to school. But I've really had good times going there. I think that's really beautiful too. Yeah. Not only you studied something like engineering, but now you've also studied theology at your young age. I think it's mm. also very inspiring to young people yeah. watching now. Because some of us, you know, grew up thinking that maybe theology is for old people, mm -hmm. people who want to be like pastors and all that. And you, as young as you are, you've gone through theology and you've been able to learn the Bible you know, like the Word of God and all the other things that they, you know, they teach in the, in the Bible school. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe it has also uh, removed a lot of confusion you were asking, yeah, you know, you were facing. And what I, I loved about your story is also that you are seeking the will of God. Mm -hmm. And it's not always uh, a matter of one plus one equals mm -hmm. two. Sometimes you, it takes time as you wait and you are mm -hmm. wrestling with what you hear. It's not like it's always straightforward. Like sometimes we have to really seek mm -hmm. and wait. And that's what I hear in your story. You, yeah. you didn't just figure it out in one day, yeah. but it took time. It's a journey of really trying to hear what God is saying. And if you think you are off track, you listen mm -hmm. more. And if you feel like there's no peace, because one of the signs that we are really being led by God is the peace that he gives. That's yeah. what I've experienced. Like when he's speaking and there's a lot of wrestling, sometimes yeah. we have not really understood. But if he is speaking to you, and then you feel the peace, then you know actually he is, because that's what the Bible says, that Jesus mm -hmm. is the Prince of Peace, so he is not going to talk to you and then just cause turmoil in you, you know? Yeah. So especially when you step into what he's calling you to do. So I, I'm really um, encouraged, because I also want to go to Bible school. I've not had an opportunity yet, yes. but I want to do it. You so I'm very there. encouraged. If as you young as you are, you have gone through Bible school, I yeah. think I should do that. I think we're running out of time, yeah. but thank you so much for sharing your, your journey and I hope that people who are watching, they can understand that this, the difference, as I hear from your story, of when you had Jesus as your friend, and now when you have him as Lord, is that now he's not only a friend, he's yeah. also the Lord, you seek his will to understand what he wants in your life. Yeah. You don't just go about doing whatever you feel like doing, no. Yeah. Because yes, he's your closest friend, but he's also your Lord. Is that, is that true? Is that what I'm... Is, yeah. yeah, like he's just, he's there like my personal 
guidance is now the yes. person that I he's your boss I would my, say yeah that I fix my eyes on mm. one thing I've learned through my story like mm. I, when I look back everything you know this verse that says that uh, you know God coming like you know when he was speaking to the to the children of Israel mm. like there were so many nations that were against the children of Israel and they wanted those nations to be driven away and be taken away but God told them I will drive it little by little so that the wild animals won't quickly yes. grow mm. and you know take out we are so sometimes we are we are really uh uh sometimes i was really always like you know frustrated by the fact that things are not being taken mm. quickly as mm. the way i want it to be taken but god sh kept showing me that he's patient with me so that i may not perish it's not about me having what i want mm. it's about me having what is needed in the moment and what god wants yeah, in your life it's about me him being life. lord of yeah. your life and as we come to an, the end of our episode today i want to encourage you possibly you have uh, known the lord jesus as you know as a friend probably or as a savior when you're in trouble you run to him when someone is sick or when you are sick you ask him to heal you when you are hungry or when you need a job you ask him to help you to find a job like sometimes we we have this relationship with him as if he can be a sponsor like he can like you can get things from him but today i want to encourage you to really move from that step and make a bold step of making him more than a friend and more than a savior more than a sponsor but lord of your life because that's what he died for he died not just for you to be getting things because even people who are unbelievers they they get wealthy sometimes they they go to doctors they treat them you know but jesus gives more than the earth can ever give he gives eternal life that's what he died for you and me to have to be reconciled by the father and to have eternal life so this is your chance as we close our episode today i want to, in, to be encouraged and there is a prayer we pray to towards the end of this episode i invite you to pray if you want to make jesus the lord of, of your life because he is the only way, actually. He said it in his word that he is the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Like, there's no other way. People might uh, lead you astray by giving you other examples of things you can do, but there's no other way. There's no other way. He's the only way to the Father. He's the only way. So, as we close, uh, what do you want to say to someone who has not given their life to Christ and then we, like, for someone, like, something short that you want to encourage someone who's not given their life to Christ? Someone who has not given uh, their life to Christ, they are missing out a lot honestly they are missing out a lot because even like people who don't believe in god i'm telling you believing god in god you have nothing to lose you really have nothing to lose but not believing in god you have everything to lose yeah. so i would encourage you to take a moment and a step forward and i mean take that boldness and just stop knowing that god is there he exists but now accept him in your life and believe that he's actually someone who can save you from your sins and take you to another uh, and save you from your sins and be Lord over your life. And to those who have already accepted him and but they're still Lord of themselves over their life, I would encourage you to stop because doing this life of Christ without Christ being Lord of our life, it's a miserable lifestyle. So, but having Christ as Lord of our life, he will direct you. He will tell you, go left and you go left or right, you go right. Because if you miss, confuse every single thing like that, because it will lead you into disobedience and disobedience is a sin. So for those who have uh, Christ as Lord of their life, they are now running into the right direction. You can always be sure that you're running into the right direction. First seek the will of the Lord and so that you may put all your energy and all your strength into the right path serving God. Thank you, Thank you so much, Gisele. It was a pleasure having you, mm -hmm. and I look forward for more yeah. of some of the episodes we'll have again when you, we share about some other topics, especially mm -hmm. now that you've gone to Bible school. There's mm -hmm. a lot you can share from what you studied there and what the Spirit is teaching you yeah. today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for following. This is Heart to Heart Show. Uh, if you have not given your life to Christ, this is your chance to give your life to Christ. We love you so much. Shalom, shalom. Bye. Bye. If you want to give your life to Christ today, pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, today I open up my life to you. I open up my heart to you to come and be Lord over every aspect of my life. Come and be Lord over my thoughts, my words, my relationships, my actions, my finances, my everything. Lord Jesus, be Lord. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and write my name in the book of life. 
Fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me the grace to follow you and serve you for all my life until the day you will come to take me back home and spend eternity with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. If you have made that prayer, you have done an incredible thing. That is a decision that you will never regret. So tell others about it. Tell your friends and find a church, find a community of believers, start growing, start learning the Bible, feed on the word of God, grow up and see God achieve.